New Capenna brought with it some crazy good stompy builds. Let's see how this one does. What is going on, everybody? And welcome back to another standard gameplay video. I hope you guys are doing really, really well today. We are going to be testing out a Golgari Stompy build. This is going to be, I think, a very fun deck. Uh, worth noting, by the way, I believe this is going up on Thursday. Uh, one thing to note, normally this is a flex day, but because we just had a new set rotate in and all that kind of stuff, I do want to, you know, keep going with the standard stuff for a little bit. We'll jump back into some of the other uh, format stuff like Popper, Modern, Commander even if we can uh, later on. But for now, I want to stick with Standard. That's really where all the fun is at, I think, at the moment anyway. So we're going to enjoy this one. This is built by Sonio. So if you don't know Sonio, go check him out. I'll link him down below. Excuse me. Fantastic deck builder, and he really did a good job with this one. Uh, I've only tested it once or twice, but so far, fingers crossed, we haven't lost a single game. And it's very, very powerful. Uh, the way that this works is essentially it's a Golgari deck, so we do have some control elements. Uh, what I mean is we've got the Blood Chief's Thirst, we've got the Massacres, the Infernal Grasp is here, uh, even Soul Transfer, which is just, I think, a really interesting card. Uh, I've seen this hit decks more often now, which I'm kind of okay with because it's a really good card. Uh, don't love that it's Sorcery Speed, but I think for this deck, it's okay. We do have Binding of the Old Gods here, of course, and Culling Ritual. You'll notice there's a bit of a ramp sub theme as well. So we do have the Celestis. The Binding is going to be able to pull out some lands. One of the new cards, Topiary Stomper, a really nice little three drop. It's Vigilance 4 4. So most of the time, it's going to come down, sit there, and block for a few turns. It can't attack or, well, excuse me, I say that. It can't attack or block until you have seven or more lands. But the important thing is that it does get you a land. And so it's very easy to kind of ramp yourself into that seven. So a lot of the time this can get down, not do too much, but get you a land. And then later on, it kind of builds into something a little more powerful. Generally, by the time you have seven lands, it can get outpowered. But because we've got so much of the spot removal, we can actually take care of some of the bigger stuff if the opponent is playing bigger stuff. Uh, and truthfully, in today's meta right now, we're not seeing a ton, I will say, of huge, huge creatures. Now, uh, we certainly have some huge creatures. We've got some big stuff. Titan of Industry sitting here at the top. One of my favorite new cards just does so much. Uh, we've got Workshop Warchief as well. All of these are really powerful cards. Uh, we do have the Invoke Despair play available to us, so we've got the full four of these. Kind of a tricky mana cost, but again, in this deck, we've got the dig ups, we've got ways to kind of pull out the lands that we need, so we're really not that concerned with the mana cost. Uh, and so thankfully, this is an option for us because this really is just a great value play. Uh, we do have a Graveyard Trespasser as well as the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. These are going to hopefully deal with some stuff in the graveyard if we need to. Shageki is going to give us some lands. We even have Harness Infinity, which I think is a ridiculous play. Uh, being able to exchange your hand in your graveyard in the late game is so powerful it just gives you so many options it's insane uh and so i'm really excited to try that uh we do have a balaged recovery to bring some stuff back and a check for traps uh and you can tell again sonio did a really good job of, of tooling this out extraordinarily well giving you those one ofs uh and with the dig up you can pull basically whatever you need out so this is a really strong deck in my opinion a very good build sonio thank you so much for sharing we're gonna try and throw this into some games hopefully get some wins with it i cannot wait guys i think this is gonna be a blast so let's go ahead and jump in see how it goes all right guys here we are for game number one now this is a bit of an interesting hand but one that i'm actually okay ish keeping these will help we do have the binding of the old gods to deal with anything ideally we'll draw into something a little better <laughs> Um, but I'm curious to see how this works. So we're going to give it a shot. We'll just see how things go. Um, worth noting also, guys, I do. That's actually quite nice. It just gives us an out. Uh, one thing I want to mention, if you have been looking on our website for any information, we've added a content schedule there uh, where you can actually see the day by day what we're releasing every single day and that kind of stuff. Highly encourage you to check that out. It's a nice way to kind of make sure that you're up to date on every little thing that we're doing. Um, unfortunately, I think we have to do this now. I don't love it, but um, I do encourage you to check that out. Again, we'll be adding to that and taking away. Well, that might change over time, um, but I just want to get something out that you guys can kind of look at and say, oh, okay, today's standard day or today's podcast day or whatever it might be. Uh, we do have the Glorious Sunrise podcast coming out every Monday at 6 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. 
highly encourage you to check all that out. It's a blast to do with my good friend Country Fried. We are really, really enjoying it. Uh, and so I do encourage you to, to enjoy that podcast. We're on, I think we've released two episodes so far. A third one is on the way for Monday. Uh, and I think the one after that's going to be a really special one. So I'm really excited about that as well. So do check that out. Uh, we've got a lot of great content coming and just some really fun stuff for you guys. So again, just enjoy it. Have some fun with it. Uh, we've got some cool, cool stuff coming up. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to destroy the, the naturalist here. The thing is the invoke despair can help get rid of this, uh, later on. Uh, so while they're going to have probably a very good turn this time, we actually have ways to kind of get around some of this stuff. Uh, so I'm curious to see how this goes, but ideally we should be able to uh, get rid of some things here with that Invoke Despair play. Uh, fantastic. Let's go ahead and get a Chasm. Let's do this. And I think the play is just Invoke Despair. Um, now, this isn't going to be quite as good because they were able to kind of turbo out some stuff here, but I think that's okay. They do have to get rid of one of the enchantments. Looks like they're going to go for the Naturalist, and then we get to draw a card here. Uh, I'm trying to think what our best plays could be. Um, Topiary Stomper isn't bad, because we are at six lands, so this is going to be a live play. But I, again, we're, we're seeing a situation where it's probably just going to get outpowered. Truthfully, what we need is um, like a Meat Hook Massacre. All right, that was kind of exactly what we needed uh that was really weird all right so let's do this for three uh pretty obvious play here just get rid of the board uh they do get the kami back which is a little annoying but at least we gained some of the life back which was very crucial they're also i mean the runes draw them cards so that is a bit of a problem but they haven't okay there's the champion i was curious because they really haven't been playing any champions which is surprising they've got all the mana in the world to do so um but it looks like they're going to be able to attack in here which is very good awesome all right so this is definitely a tricky matchup for us as we're seeing like they can just power out some stuff here so we do have to be a bit careful with that but uh we again do have outs so that's helpful uh we'll go ahead and play the black uh, yep. So we will play this. Uh, we'll grab this. Um, and I think we just pass leaving up the Infernal Grasp here. Yep. 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 Um, curious to see, I mean, depending on what's in their hand, we could potentially kind of not not wreck them by any means but kind of get them here a little um if they attack in i actually just think we block weirdly um yeah i think i'm okay with this so we do take one here which isn't ideal but then i'm gonna go ahead and kill the champion as well um that champion is so good, and I'm just not super stoked on them having it. Um, let's go ahead and play this. Uh, and we're setting ourselves up for a fantastic Harness Infinity, honestly. So that might end up being the play. Let's go ahead and activate the Hive. So here's the trick with the Hive. They can definitely double block it and kill it. Uh, but crucially, we actually are getting some of these runes out of the graveyard which is very important when they are looking to bring some of those back. So they are going to trade off here. Uh, one of the ones for, or one of their tokens for a hive, which is very good. But again, they're dealing some damage and we're getting some, some damage through as well. So this actually works out great. Uh, excuse me. It is actually a two for one because they lose, excuse me, the, the toughness after that. So that's actually kind of nice. All right. Um, yep. Kami is back interesting um all right so let's let's be a little cheeky here uh we're gonna gain some life again i'm holding off on the harness infinity play because i don't think we have to do it uh i, I don't think we're quite there yet this has vigilance which is great let's get that kami out of there so they just don't have it anymore 
Um, and we'll pass. I think next turn might be Harness Infinity time uh, because we are going to have some good things we want to hit, like this uh, Architect of Restoration. That's certainly a card I don't want to have on the field. Uh, or I don't want them to have on the field. And we've got plenty of removal next turn as well if we do Harness Infinity. So let's see, six, seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That would leave us three mana. It's not a ton, but again, it it still gives us some plays. We can actually do this at instant speed as well. That's something to consider. Um, I always forget Harness Infinity is an instant because I just don't play with it very often. <laughs> um, Finding of the Old Gods. I just keep finding things I want to play off my... Uh, <laughs> the top of my deck though um interesting all right so i'm actually gonna do this let's blow this up um now we can attack i don't know that i need to what's the worst they could get like another rune champion runeforge champion would be kind of bad we attack actually you know what i i am gonna attack if they decide to double block to kill the stomper that's kind of okay um because they would have to double block in an odd way and we actually get to then kill the architect of restoration so this seems like a pretty easy four damage uh worth noting we can activate our hive of the eye tyrant just to block if we need to um but i think getting that hollowed haunting out of here is pretty important not feeling great but not feeling dead either which is helpful all right sick um hmm. all right so let's let's pull the same trick twice let's do this uh and see what they decide to do um the Harness Infinity play is looking pretty reasonable this turn. We could dig up for sure. Um, just to search out... Culling Ritual would be kind of sick. Ooh, that's really good. Maybe that's the play. Maybe we should have done that first, honestly. Okay, so they are going to double block. That's fine. So we actually get to kill this little guy. That's fine. So Architect of Restoration is dead fantastic we feel a little bit of damage still let's go ahead and dig up here let's get the calling ritual this does blow up our own uh meat hook massacre we're doing, but it also gets rid of the board <laughs> uh, which is pretty good um and now we can just harness infinity <laughs> um i guess we could have done that at instant speed but uh this well no we couldn't have really um what do we get rid of i think it's one of you one of you and might be binding honestly i don't know that we've got a lot that binding hits I, I, well it hits a lot don't get me wrong but um i feel like in this scenario it's kind of okay to get rid of it because we we're we're more just looking to gain that extra value i think I, we'll see we'll see this turned into a really good game, though. This is a, a longer game for sure, but we're managing it okay, uh, at least so far. I think we've been playing fairly well. Um, that Hive of the Eye Tyrant getting rid of that Kami of Transients was so crucial to our uh, our overall plan here. We could have also gotten rid of a Stomper. That probably was a better play. Um, but now we can start to kind of flood the board. We've got the Invoke Despair play available. We've got the Meat Hook Massacre play available. Got a lot of stuff uh, thanks to that Harness Infinity. So feeling pretty good. It looks like the opponent is not super stoked about the uh, position because I think they are just chilling, maybe, uh, which is fine. I get it. It's a little frustrating, I'm sure. But uh, yeah, it's this don't be this person. Uh, if you're ever playing and you're getting frustrated, I get it. I get very frustrated sometimes. Try very hard not to show that on recording because I feel like it's it's not a very positive vibe. And I think that's kind of the, the goal of the channel is to just be positive and have fun. And so it's a little tricky sometimes because you're on a losing streak. I've had it to days on end where I'm just losing every single game and it sucks. But like, don't do this. Come on. 
Because this isn't fun for anybody. It's not fun for you because you're either just disconnected or waiting. And it's not fun for the other person because unfortunately they just have to sit here and wait. And I will sit here and wait even though it's on recording because I'm not taking a loss for you. <laughs> That's so stupid. Uh, so anyway, guys, I really hope you're having a great day. <laughs> uh, we will have a collection update on uh, Saturday as well. I do want to encourage you guys to check that out. We uh, we called out Randall uh, in the last one, one of our community members who was going to start a binder, but didn't actually have parameters yet set for themselves. And now finally, he was able to set some parameters. We encouraged him hopefully to do so. I'm really excited for him because I think it'll be a great one. Uh, I will, uh, I'll let you guys know more about that in the uh, collection update, but uh, Randall, happy collecting to you. I hope everything goes well. That series is really special to me. Um, I love collecting. It's really where my heart is at. And there we go. We got the win, guys. Awesome game. That was a really, really good one. Uh, let's move on to game number two. What's up, guys? Before we jump into the next game, I just want to remind you, if you would like to pick up this month's Patreon rewards, feel free to do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. All right, guys, here we are for game number two. And uh, yeah, this is a pretty easy keep. Um, we've got an Infernal Grass turn two available. We've even got a Stomper turn three, which is really nice. And then Meat Hook Massacre, of course, can come down whenever we so choose. So this is pretty solid. Um, curious to see what the opponent actually is up to here as well. So, so far, green white looks to be the play. It might just be Naya Rooms again, which is a little unfortunate, but we should be able to handle it okay. Uh, let's go ahead and stomp her. Grab ourselves an extra land here. We do want to get black sources because we do have the Invoke Despair available. Not that we're really hurting for it. We've got them. Oh. All right, cool. <laughs> We did it! <laughs> that was so stupid. All right, uh, game three. All right, guys, here we are for game number three. Uh, weirdly, I'm kind of okay with this hand. I don't love it, <clears throat> um, but Culling Ritual does give us some outs in the early turns of the game. Uh, and what we can actually do is Culling Ritual, potentially, depending on what they're doing, and then use the mana for a cleaved dig up. Um, ideally, we draw into something a little bit cleaner. <laughs> but we'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and Chasm. I'm hard pressed to count that game too, but I think we will just because time, uh, unfortunately, is always a factor. Um, all right, I mean, I'm just gonna keep playing the Taft lands. There's no reason really not to, so seems pretty straightforward. There's the Innkeeper, sure. Um, okay, I mean, again, Keep playing the tap lands. There's not a reason not to. And uh, and next turn, we do have Culling Ritual available. So we know at least it's going to hit a Prosperous Innkeeper. <laughs> um, and if we need to, we can just cleave the dig up. We don't have to Culling Ritual first. So that is a nice little option for us. You can always just pull like a Meat Hook Massacre. Um, which is never a bad card to have against a deck like this. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Curious as to what they are going to go for here. Okay. Looks like angels. Um, unfortunately, Culling Ritual does not hit that, which is a little frustrating, but it's it's manageable. Let's go ahead and cleave this out. Um, and I do think the pull is probably just Meat Hook Massacre. It's just the, a really good card against little one drops like this so i'm super into this uh we also do just have invoke despair available is that a doom scar i wonder um all right well gonna take a hit for three here but that's fine they actually don't see the card that we pulled either which is kind of relevant i mean chances are they would have not played around it well would have played around it either way but um so in the interest of safety i'm just gonna do this for two i don't see a reason not to um i don't think they would have anything that would hit it but importantly this just gets around any kind of like weird pump spell. i doubt they have it but just to be safe i'd rather uh not have to worry about it 
uh, and we'll play the chasm. Um, that gives us our triple green for the Harness Infinity, so we're a little bit closer there. We also have Invoke Despair coming up next turn. Uh, so even if they do some kind of big play, uh, we should be able to kind of get them here, at least a little bit, uh, or stabilize maybe. All right, Seekus Chariot's a good one. Uh, thankfully, Culling Ritual kind of gets around that a little bit. Awesome. Um, so I actually do think the play is just Culling Ritual. Is that correct? Oops. Let's make sure we're not tapping the Hive of the Eye Tyrant. So if we can activate it, we will. That gives us two, probably can't, but still. I'm just gonna go ahead and do this. Um, oh, we can, totally, my bad. <laughs> uh, do we? For an enchantment and planeswalker, no. I don't think we do. Let's just activate Hive. And let's get in for an attack. Uh, we'll get the Overseer out. And we'll pass. Uh, they can very well activate an Asika's Chariot here, I'm sure. If they just have a four mana creature, or a four power creature. Yasharn is a good one. Very, very good one. Um, again, though, we have the Invoke Despair. So, like, they're taking most of their turn, if not all of their turn, to play Yasharn. That's fine. Uh, crucially as well, we do have Harness Infinity coming down at some point. So, we're one mana away. Unfortunately, Hive is a tapped land. Really, we should have played this last turn. That was just a mistake. Um, that would have opened up the Harness Infinity play, but here we just have Invoked Despair, and, and what, are, what are they going to do there? Um, yeah, I'm actually just going to go ahead and do this. Cool. So this draws us a couple of cards here. Unfortunately, no lands, which is kind of not great but um it does hit him for a few points of damage we've got the titan of industry available now like this is gonna blow up the asika's chariot but we i think can stabilize pretty easily here oh look a titan of industry <laughs> fantastic uh well we're just gonna kill that <laughs> that's amazing um so they do put a shield counter on it makes total sense um hmm well we'll see what happens here then very interesting very interesting indeed all right field of ruin that's helpful against their layer of the hydras uh hmm so we can kill the that with no problem at all um all right so let's do this let's kill this we're basically gonna like force some uh some stuff here so let's do this we are gonna blow up an artifact for sure and i think just put a shield counter up so we're gonna blow up the chariot put a shield counter on the titan of industry and now it's titan versus titan they do have layer of the hydras though so they are technically in a better spot than we are um but i'm all too happy to uh wow okay well that doesn't do anything <laughs> wow nice okay very good so what do we do if they attack I think we block honestly they decided not to fair enough very fair Ooh, balaget huh i do really like balaget recovery here um it gets rid of some stuff though it's not everything we could pull back meat hook which i do kind of like that play We also have the war chief. Um, all right. I am going to attack. 
This is probably a mistake, though. In fact, this is definitely a mistake. What we should have done is Meat Hook Massacre first. That was silly. Alright. I'm not super sold that I'm making the right call. I definitely don't think I am, but that's okay. Uh, we'll gain a little bit of life here. We will return meat hook to our hands. So basically, I'm just setting up a, a situation where, like, when this dies, I just get a 4-4. Four, four. But importantly, we're going to try and get that shield counter off of there. If they attack in, it's great. All right. That's fine, actually. Um, yeah. So, depending on how they do this, we just block, most likely. Oh, they just have that. Okay, that's fine. Did they not? They could have, right? So, we just block here. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six. We need a land, actually. Hmm. Um, that's a little, I did not count very well. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. This is gonna get us our land that we need to get rid of this Titan of Industry. Um, but we're not in great shape here, to be honest. Uh, Alright, we'll see what happens. Uh, this is an interesting game. This is a long game as well. These games tend to go long, obviously. I mean, that's kind of the style of this deck anyway, but uh, this is fascinating. Hmm. Here's to hoping we don't die. I mean, as it stands, we don't, but they, I'm sure, can do quite a bit to us. Okay. They play that just to draw a card, by the way, since it's not a great creature late game anyway. I think that makes a lot of sense. Now that is kind of an interesting play, but I guess they're just trying to build up for the Asika's Chariot, maybe? I don't know. I don't know why they wouldn't just attack with, like, a layer of the Hydra. Seems pretty good, but whatever. Yeah, totally. So here, I'm actually more inclined to just block the Asika's Chariot. Um, just to get it off the field before the meat hook master comes down, I feel like that might just be better. We take seven, I know, but like we're gonna gain some of this life back. Um, yeah, let's do it and hope they don't have anything. <laughs> the problem is they already have just a layer of the Hydra, so hopefully they can't kill us. I'm not counting it, to be honest, but I don't think they can deal 13 to us. Um, we can harness infinity. That doesn't super help. And they decide not to. Very confused by why the opponent is playing in certain ways, but that's fine. Okay, well, that's really good. We do have some outs to that. Um, see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, minus 3, so that's 7, 8, 9, 10, so yeah, we can do both. Oh no, we can't. Oh crap, uh, I think I screwed up. That's fine. Alright, let's do that. Um, yeah, I definitely screwed up there. Uh, Okay, so I think we just pass with Hive up. Um, yeah, all right. We'll see how this goes. <laughs> We're gonna blow it up. Interesting. Um, yeah, okay. What a game. What a game. Yeah, we'll definitely take the action. Let's get a green. <laughs> we definitely need extra green. Um, that actually does open up Harness Infinity, doesn't it? Thank you for that, weirdly. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Again, why don't you attack with Lair of the Hydra? It's very confusing. Um, so I'm going to let that hit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we actually could have done something about that, but we don't have to. All right. I don't want them to see the Harness Infinity play yet. Like, I want them to play stuff second main phase, so then we can Harness Infinity and they're not playing around it, if that makes sense. Um, so while two damage sucks, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> yeah, sick. One, two, three, four, five. They can't play it yet. Wow, they just have so many of these professors. Very good. Um, but we can super deal with it, so that's fine. I love the fact that this happens instant speed, because this is a great option for us here. It just sets up great plays, like we're going to be able to, to gain some life back um, and do quite a bit here. So let's go ahead and harness infinity now. <laughs> I mean, how sick is this? Uh, all right, land is great. Super happy to see that. Um, let's go first things first and attack. Because technically that's the correct thing. They should just block, but you never know. Always attack first. If they're smart, they will block. Um, my thought is if we can... My hope would have been that they block with the 4-4, but they're smart and they're not doing that. Which is absolutely fair. Um, now we meat hook for 4. There was consideration to playing meat hook first because it would have gained more life. Um, but... This is fine. Okay. Um, the Culling Ritual is going to be able to deal with the other stuff too here, so that's fine. Um, we can just Titan. Which seems pretty good. Um, alternatively, we can do this also do this i'm just gonna tighten man screw it <laughs> i don't know at this point like i think we're just in the camp of we just need to do the coolest stuff um all right so shield counter looks pretty good i i think the treasure token is fairly negligible so i'm actually just gonna gain five life my thought process is if i do throw the um i think we just end the turn if I do throw the 4-4 out there, like, most likely next turn, they're going to Mascot Exhibition, in which case we just are going to Culling Ritual, because none of them have mana values. So, like, I don't really care. And then I'm leaving Balaged Recovery, because then in that case, we can pull the Meat Hook back. So, but we would kill our own 4-4 in doing all this. So my thought process is more like, we don't have to do that. Um... So there's mascot exhibition. Again, fully expected that, um, but we can blow it all up. So this is all fine. Uh, curious to see what creature they get. A Titan. Awesome. We have the answer for that. Uh, multiple answers for that, actually. So I'm just going to do this now. Doesn't really matter how we play that, I don't think. Uh, let's war chief. Oh, okay, sick. We did it. Hey, that was a long game, but an undefeated run. Heck yes, we are getting so many undefeated runs, it feels like. Let's jump into the wrap-up. All right, guys, another undefeated run, back-to-back -back runs. Uh, that was really sick. Sonia, thank you so much again for putting this deck together. I think you built a, cr a, a crazy, crazy good deck. I think we did a really great job piloting it, surprisingly. Uh, tried to think things through, be a little bit mo more methodical than I normally am, uh, and I think it worked out. Um, I misplay a lot, so I'm sure I did through these games, but thankfully we still were able to pull out three straight wins with this list. Absolutely love this one, guys. This is really, really good. Uh, Golgari builds are always right up my alley. They have the removal piece as well as just their really scary threats and basically all the things you need to deal with whatever. 
Uh, and so for me, this was a really, really good option. Uh, and again, just the toolbox nature of this with the dig up and everything there was just phenomenal. So again, Sonia, thank you so much, my friend. Thank you to everybody who is watching. I really do appreciate any and all support, guys. We will have another giveaway going on at some point. The, the previous one ended yesterday, uh, but do keep in mind, we will most likely have more giveaways coming up very, very soon. So I encourage you, subscribe if you are not already. It really would mean a lot. But guys, thank you. I love you all. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you again very soon.